So a co-worker brought me a family heirloom from World War I and asked me if I would frame it. Nothing special, just your standard flag triangle display case. Of course I said yes, and it reminded me that I had my father-in-law's flag from World War II, which was very similar, so I would tackle them at the same time, one in oak, the other in mahogany. I also pulled out my father-in-law's garrison cover to see if there was a way I could incorporate it into the project. So let's get started. Taking the thicker of the two flags, I lay a scrap piece of wood onto it to see how much space the flag actually needs. Two inches. Next I take a quick measurement of the base of the flag. I am going to go a little bit larger on the base so I can add some flare. As always, don't trust your saw's settings. Use a square to line things up. For the base of the mahogany display, I intend to use a piece left over from a previous project that was used for cutting out an Air Force logo. This piece is thinner, but it just happens to be the right length. I quickly take it to the miter saw to ensure that the ends are square. Now measure the top of the flag and cut two corresponding pieces to that length. Okay, this is unusual, so I had to show you. While checking the width of the board I just cut, it tapered to a 2 16th of a difference. So I will run this piece through the table saw so they match in our square. It's not that often that you get that much variation within less than three feet, but I'm glad I noticed. Next, I'm going to figure out my placement. I know I need two inches for the flag, a quarter inch for the back plate, and at least a quarter inch for the glass groove. So taking those measurements into consideration, I mark the top piece. So with a total of two and a half inches, I cut my pieces thinner than the base plate. At no more than a quarter of an inch from the edge, I cut my glass groove. It should also not be any deeper than a quarter of an inch. I grab my framing jig to get a quick, easy 45 degree angle. You can use your miter saw or table saw, but if you have the jig, this saves you a lot of time. If you miss the making of this jig, then you need to hit that subscribe button so you're not behind the power curve next time. As always, I make this up as I go along, so here I decided to give the base a nice rounded edge, so I'm checking to see if my pieces will fit within the routed edges. Looks like they will. This time, instead of swapping out the blade for the dado, I decided just to cut a quarter of an inch in each direction to give me the back plate insert groove. A quick check to see if I cut enough, and then I move on. Take one of your top pieces and set it in the glass track that you cut previously. Slide your fence up to the edge and then take another piece of wood and cut a strip that you will later use as the base glass cover. I often get asked what type of wood glue I use. I use Elmer's Wood Glue Max. Whatever you pick, just make sure it's stainable. Now join your top two pieces together. Here I have a nice framing clamp, but after considering most of you won't have this device, I decided to do it another way. Turn your corner on end and use two scrap pieces to ensure you're flush. You can clamp down and wait, but I'm impatient, so I stick a brad in it so I can move on. So you won't be surprised when you see the oak frame appear. I show a few clips to remind you that I am repeating this process with the other type of wood. So far, both are identical to this point. When routing the thinner base piece, I lost a big chunk of the corner, so I had to recut a new one to full width this time. So now there will be no difference in the width, but a slight difference in the length because I just cut the new piece without measuring. Moving forward with the new base piece, I take the wood to the router, and with a 3 8 round over bit, yes that is my favorite, and yes I have others, I begin to cut out what I envision the border of the base plate to look like. I quickly double check that my upper pieces won't extend past the routed edge. Now we are going to cut the bottom of the glass frame. Take the thin piece you cut earlier and lay on your workbench. Flip the box over so the face is down and lay it directly on your strip. 
Using a small piece of scrap wood, ensure your strip is flush with the bottom. Then hold firm and make your cutting marks inside the frame. Take those marks to the miter saw and cut your angles. Check your fit and adjust where necessary. Before we begin sanding, put your boxes back together and look for any areas that you might need to focus a little more on while sanding. I always sand in three stages, first with 60 grit, then with a medium 100. I finish it off with a fine 120 for a polished smooth look. I'm not going to waste any time sanding the backs or inside of the frame, only those pieces that will show or could possibly be touched. Now we are going to attach the bottom glass frame piece. First flip one of the base pieces upside down, then put a bead of glue on each end of your strip. Push snugly into place and use a piece of scrap wood to ensure you are flush and not lower than the bottom of the box. Wipe up any glue if you use too much, but remember that the inside will not show any of your glue spills, so don't worry too much. Repeat this process to both frames. While we let the glue set, we will move on and cut the back plate. Since my triangles are square, I am simply going to use a square to cut out the back plate. Picking a random spot, I lay out my square and draw my lines. Now take them to the table saw and cut your lines, remembering to cut on the outside of your line. Go slow if you need to, but I have learned that the more fast, fluid, and continuous my motion, the straighter my cut is. Now to cut the bottom of your triangle, place your back plate into position and using a straight edge and a piece of scrap wood, here I use a ruler, make sure you are flush with the bottom and make your mark. Before we join the frame with the base plate, we are going to stain the pieces. My coworker said she wanted her display in a dark honey stain. So here I use Minwax with the polyurethane is already included. As always, I simply use paper towels to apply. Here I put down a thin layer to see how the wood absorbs it. If I need to go darker, I will just apply more. I really got lucky with the grain of this wood. It is just simply stunning. For the oak display, I used a light walnut stain. I decided to put a placard block on the front of each triangle. This way, she and I could have small placards made identifying the owners of the flags. I cut a small thin piece and sanded three of the sides to make them look beveled. Leave the bottom flat so it's flush with the base plate when it's, once it's glued down. At this point, I am extremely happy with the outcome, but I'm worried as I'm about to use glass on these display cases. So laying the triangles on their sides, I slide a corner of the glass pane into each frame. With a grease pencil, I make my mark. With my first cut, my yardstick slid a little, so I didn't know how this would come out. But I got lucky and the break was clean and it fit very well. Always remember to handle the glass with gloves, especially after you cut it, as the edges are extremely sharp. So this time, when cutting the glass for the mahogany display, I clamped down the yardstick so it would not move. This cut came out perfect. Now with the glass in place, I prepped the triangles for the flags. I start by cutting a scrap piece of plexiglass to go behind the first layer of the flag. Anything will really, really work here. Uh, it just needs to be thin so you don't take up too much room of your two inches. This keeps the flag face nice and smooth when pressed up against the glass. So now that we have those cut, 
we are ready to join the triangles to the base plates. Put a thin bead of glue on each end and smooth out evenly with your finger. For the front glass strip, I will place a thin bead of glue all the way across. Don't be afraid to make a mess here. Glue wipes up easy, and as for the glass, it comes off easy with a razor. All the glue that's squeezed out can be wiped up with a flathead screwdriver and some paper towels. The glue lets me know that I have contact all the way across the base of the display. Once dry, you will have extra strength. You need this extra support when you start pushing your flag into the display. At this time, glue down your placard block. Turn the display on its side and set a small weight on the block so you can ensure that it has a good bond. With the oak triangle, I felt I did not have a tight bond on the glass faceplate, so I grabbed a clamp and squeezed it into place until it was dry and had a solid bond. I also decided to change it up a bit and move the placard block over to the right. I did this for two reasons. The first was for more support to the placard block. The second was to balance out the garrison cover that was going into the right side of this box. To show you how easy the glue comes off the glass, I simply grab my razor and shave off the glue now that it is dry. Now that is a high focus camera. Just look at all that dust. Now that everything has had time to dry, we can put in the flags. Start by opening the flags a little and aligning the first layer of your stars. From there, place your flag support behind that first layer, then fold in the rest of your flag. Before I tack down the back plate to the display, I grab a scrap piece of both types of wood, meaning the back plate and the mahogany. I change my gun's intensity from 6 to 4 to see how this looks. On the first try, I think I got it perfect. The brad is not sticking up nor too deep, but perfectly flush. With the right settings, I can now begin to tack down the back plate to the display. One down, one to go. Not forgetting the garrison cover, I repeat the same process and begin to seal up the box. Now that I'm all done, I think they look great. Not bad for doing these out of your garage, huh? If you give these a shot, let me know how they turn out. I would love to see some pics. So which one do you like better, the mahogany or the oak? Would love to hear your comments below. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.